Hello, welcome to another Dominion 6 Mod Nation Showcase. Today we are taking a look at Middle Age Silver League, Desert Academies. This nation is based on the Academy faction from Heroes of Might and Magic 5 and Heroes of Might and Magic 7. I haven't even played Heroes of Might and Magic 7, so I just used some information I found on the wiki. And I actually got filtered by the Heroes of Might and Magic uh, necropolis campaign so i haven't played the academy campaign either so let's take a look at it i had to take some creative liberties here with the lineup uh, starting site is the arcane portal that produces three astral pearls one fire gem and one air gem per turn the troops first we have the kabir or kabir i'm not sure uh, they replaced the gremlins in Heroes of Might and Magic 7. Uh, they are small creatures with size 2, some natural protection, 4 stats, but they are very cheap. They are fire spirits, so they have fire resistance, cold susceptibility, poison resistance, magic being needed, that it, fear of the flood, stealthy 50, wasteland survival. They also take 50% of their HP in damage every turn underwater. Uh, they can't go underwater normally. They have a dagger and a throw flames attack. The Sword Sage is the basic uh, warrior of uh, the Silver League. They wield scimitars, they have some okayish armor, and very minor fire resistance and wasteland survival. The upgraded version is the Blade Mage. They have enchanted scimitars that have high attack and deal a lot of magic damage. So that's, that's actually pretty damn good, I think. The Rakshasa Skirmisher. I decided to go with uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 7 Rakshasas, so they are actually living creatures instead of uh, summon spirits, because otherwise uh, the troop lineup would be very very boring and uh, very very short. Uh, the Rakshasas are size 4 creatures with lots of hit points and high strength, they have very small natural protection, I magic resistance and morale. They have wasteland survival and skirmisher. They have spears, javelins, linen cuirass, and shields. The Rakshasa Kshatra. They do wield uh, enchanted scimitars, so they have high attacks that deal a lot of magic slashing damage, but they basically have no armor, almost no armor. And they are not skirmishers anymore. However, they are ambidextrous. Then we have the... Let's start with the genies. Lesser genie. Uh, it's a recruitable spirit. That costs 65 gold. That's a lot. Shock resistance, magic being, need not eat, ethereal, flying, iron vulnerability, salt vulnerability, wasteland survival, spirit sight, magic power, one storm immunity as a fist and a mind blast so they are quite hard to damage then we have the birds the lesser bird is the arcane eagle uh, that's a size 3 bird with a strength uh, 6 some well higher than normal skills magic being need not eat ethereal flying iron and soul for ability spirit form wasteland survival spirit sight magic power 1 storm immunity they have magical talents, like uh, Monstrous Pretenders, and Spirit Strike, uh, that's an attack that deals armor-piercing capped damage, but also has a linked stun. The upgraded bird is a Simurg. Uh, it can only be recruited in the capital. It costs 50 gold, so that's a lot. It's not sacred, despite being a capital-only recruit. It has the same tags, but also has all one. And same attacks, talents and spirit strike. But this bird is stronger and bigger. 
So they hit harder. Then we have the other capital only recruits. First, the Thunder Giant. Uh, that's uh, a stone golem from Heroes of Mighty Magic 3 with some science scribbles. They have a Thunder Fist that deals a shock uh, damage as a follow up. That's armor negating, not armor piercing. They are size 9 creatures that cost 170 gold, 65 resources, and 40 recruitment points. They have a lot of HP, very high strength, uh, okay skills, they are slow, they have good magic resistance. They are mindless, so they require magic leadership, or they just uh, dissolve. And OK protection. They have poor amphibian slash pierce resistant, shock resistant, poison resistant, magic being inanimate, need not eat, mindless, never heals, and blind. And we also have the war giants that uh, are capital only sacreds. In addition to Thunder Fist, they have a Stellar Bolt attack, that's a ranged armor negating attack that can be resisted uh, with magic resistance for half damage. They cost 210 gold in more resources, so they are very expensive and they also cost 2 holy points. Uh, they have higher protection, higher strength, higher hit points uh, than the Thunder Giants. And they also have Trample. They are very strong, but they are very expensive. You cannot recruit lots of them. Uh, that's all for the recruitable units. I have no idea if I balance the cost properly. Uh, I'm not good at balancing. But maybe I'll get some feedback later and adjust the numbers. The Commanders. The Rakshasa Scout is a scout. With size 4, nothing to see here. The Kabir Master is a stealthy commander with leadership 50, uh, who has some armor. The Sheriff with a single F, that's how it's spelled in Heroes of Meta Magic 7, uh, is a basic commander that is not stealthy but has Defense Organizer 1 and reduces Unrest by a little bit, better than nothing. The Lord is a good commander, no special abilities, but has an Enchanted Helmet, Enchanted Scimitar, and Leadership 100, and poor Magic Leadership as well, which is actually quite important in this nation because we have lots of Magic Beings. The Rakshasa Rani is, a, is the only priest in this nation, and it's only a holy one priest. Then we have the mages. The apprentice is a mage that has one random elemental or astral path. So that's a very weak mage. The disciple has a 100% chance to get two levels of an elemental path or an astral, so you cannot get cross path. The wizard is a recruitable everywhere, a slow to recruit mage, who starts old. Water 3, astral 2, and a guaranteed fire, air, earth random. So that's a quite a powerful mage and that can be recruited anywhere. Then we have the capital only mages, the Enchanter, Earth 3, Astral 2, a guaranteed Fire, Air, Water, Astral random, and a rare Earth random. Also starts out old and has Master Smith 1. And the Battle Mage is another, uh, the, Enchanter, the Enchanter also is a slow to recruit mage. The Battle Mage also is slow to recruit. Fire 2, Air 2, 2 guaranteed Fire Air randoms and a rare uh, Water Earth Astral random. Also starts out old and has Combat Caster. That's all for the recruitables, but we have lots of summons. This is a magic nation after all.
Uh, let's take a look at them. Uh, first, in Enchantment 5, you can cast Unliving Elemental Gargoyles. That's an Earth 2 Astral 2 spell. For 14 gems, you summon 10 plus Elemental Gargoyles. I had no idea what to do with this unit. That's an alternative upgrade from Heroes of Might and Magic 5. And uh, the description talks about some mystical marbles. In the original game, they just uh, impose elemental weaknesses all around themselves, but that's impossible in Dominions. So I decided to do something else. These gargoyles uh, have a poor amphibian slash pierce resistant. Shock, Fire, Cold Resistance and uh, 5, that's all the elements, and Poison Resistance 25. Magic Beam the Inanimate need that it, they have a Chill Aura. Uh, mindless Flying never heals an Air Shield, so that's the element of Water or Cold, element of Air, Spirit Side, and their attack also deals a follow-up Fire damage, so they Enchanted both with uh, cold, air, and fire. So they are elemental gargoyles. Then in construction 2 you can cast Construct Sandstone Golems. As an Earth 2 spell, for 7 gems you summon 6 plus Sandstone Golems. Here is these headless constructs uh, that use a heavily modified troglodyte sprite. They have a stone fist attack. Uh, all the normal construct uh, trades. Uh, they are quite fast for golems. They have combat speed 14, when normal golems are usually quite slow. Uh, in construction 4 you can cast construct magnetic golems. That's an earth 2 spell, for 6 gems you summon 5 plus magnetic golems. That's a very weird creature, because uh, that's an alternative upgrade for the Iron Golem in Heroes of Might and Magic 5. That is called Magnetic Golem, but uh, it doesn't really have anything magnetic about it. And the description calls it an Obsidian Golem. So, what's up with that? I decided to give them Obsidian Blades to represent uh, their description. Uh, they are armor piercing, slash and magic uh, weapons. Uh, I gave them susceptibility to shock, so they have an I guess an a positive or a negative electromagnetic charge that attacks electricity. And that's it. That's all I decided to give them. They are size three creatures with two attacks, so they have quite a decent attack density. Their protection is not very high, but their magic resistance is very high. Uh, and do not forget that these are armor piercing damage. So they're, they should be pretty good, I think. In construction selling, you can cast Construct Dragon Golem. That's a fire or earth 2 spell for 22 gems. You summon one Dragon Golem. Uh, that's a unit from Heroes of Might and Magic 4. Uh, it has all the stats of the Iron Dragon, but it cannot fly. I think that's literally it. Does the Iron Dragon have Trample? I don't remember. Uh, but uh, the Iron Dragon is a construction 8 spell, so you get this one a level earlier. In Enchantment 3, you can cast Unliving Gold Eidolons. That's an Air 2 Astro 1 spell. For 5 gems, you summon 3 plus Gold Eidolons. There are these uh, Golden Helmets with a Genie bound to them. They have a Lightning Swarm attack. Amphibian slash Pierce resistant, susceptible to shock, fire resistant, poison resistant, magic being inanimate, need not eat mindless, flying never heals. Spirit side, storm immunity, and affliction resistance. Sorry about that. And high magic resistance, of course. Also in Enchantment 3, you can cast a living magic golems. 
That's an Astral 2 Air 1 spell. For 6 gems you summon 3 plus Magic Golems. There it is Eidolon that lost their Lightning Swarm attack and instead got a Magic Golem Fist. Uh, that's 2 magical attacks each. So you trade an Armor Negating attack for higher attack density. Uh, that's all the summons. We have a bunch of heroes. First is uh, Galib, who is a genie, a proper genie, with air 3, astral 4, ethereal and invisible. So he's very difficult to hit. Then we have Jora, uh, who is a fire 2, astral 4, sorceress with innate spellcaster 1. So she can cast spells very, very quickly. Uh, then we have Faiz, who is a fire 2, air 4, earth 3 mage, old, fire caster 1 with all paths, and combat caster. Uh, then we have uh, Nathir or Nathir and Chur, who is a Fire 5 mage with the Farcaster Fire. Uh, then we have Cyrus. I think that's an important character in the campaign, but I haven't played the campaign. Fire 2, Air 2, Water 2, Earth 2, Astral 4. Old and Master Ritualist 1. That's a late hero. I don't think he can arrive after, I mean, before uh, turn 15. And then we have uh, Zaheer, also an, an important campaign hero. Uh, Fire 2, Air 2, Water 2, Earth 2, Inspiration 1. That's also a late hero, I think, or maybe not. So that's all the heroes. We also have some national pretenders. Uh, who are they? These three. The Golden Dragon is a dragon that produces gold. Fire 1, Astral 1 instead of Fire 2. And cannot shapeshift. The Rakshasa Raja has a retinue of 1d6 Rakshasa Kshatras, 4 enchanted scimitars, crown, golden scale mail, air shield 80. Ambidextrous 4, 4 uh, hand slots, and air 2. Pretty cool. And Noble Genie, who is a genie with a rating of 1d6 air elementals with size 3, I think, or 4. Air 1, Astral 2, ethereal, but not invisible. And that's it. That's the Academy faction. Uh, honestly, I was dreading this one because uh, I had no idea what to do with the roster. What should be the summons, what should be the recruitables, I had no idea what to do. Uh, but I am more or less content with the result. Uh, next we have only 4 nations left. Next time I will do either dungeon or Stronghold from Heroes of Might and Magic 5. Those are going to be interesting, I think. So, thank you for watching, I will see you next time.